Good morning. I'd like to welcome you to the ambassador class. Uh, we have quite a few prayer requests this week. I ask you to pray for Richard and Clara Sue. I ask you to pray for Carmen Chisholm. I ask you to pray for Billy and Brenda Knight. I ask you to pray for Herman Shannon. Please pray for Virginia Pearson's daughter, Robin, who is being tested for cancer. And I ask you to pray for Jim and Ann Sizemore as she goes for some tests. I ask you to continue praying for the Richardsons. And I ask you to continue to pray for America. I'm thankful that I get the opportunity again to teach, but I will be so glad when we get back to church. I mentioned to both this morning, maybe we need some cardboard cutouts for the preacher and for those that are preaching so we can have an audience here to preach to rather than a video camera. But I am so thankful that we have the technology to be able to send forth the Word of God by video. So would you pray with me this morning for this morning's service? Let's pray. Father, this is your work. This is your church. This is your people. For those names I mentioned, Lord, I lift them up before the throne of grace to find help in the time of need. I pray, Lord, that you'll be with America during this time. Calm our people. May your perfect will be done in the life of America. And Lord, I pray for our president, for our leaders, because the Bible says that the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord, and it's the rivers of water. He turneth it whithersoever he will. So Lord, keep your hand upon America. And we ask these in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our lesson this morning takes us to 2 Chronicles chapter 20. 2 Chronicles chapter 20. This is a, a biblical account of how Jehoshaphat was to go into battle. And we're going to discuss the battle today and see a truth in God's word. 2 Chronicles 20, verse 1. It came to pass after this also. Now, what is the this also? In the previous chapter, you will have seen Ahab and Jehoshaphat go into battle. That was the battle where Ahab was killed and Jehoshaphat was spared. But in chapter 20, verse 1, it came to pass after this also, so Jehoshaphat is facing another ba battle that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and with them other beside the Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side Syria. And behold, they be in Hetzazan Tamar, which is in Gadai. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court. So let me set the scene. Jehoshaphat has heard word there's a great battle. He goes to the house of the Lord, which is Solomon's temple. He brings the people from all over Israel in Judah to, to the temple there. And he begins to pray. In 
and what a beautiful prayer it is. In 2 Chronicles 20, verse 6, this is the prayer that Jehoshaphat prayed. O Lord God of our fathers, art thou not in heaven? Notice his position. Our God reigns in heaven. And rulest thou not over all the kingdoms of the heathen? Notice his preeminence. And in thy hand is there not power and might, so that none is able to withstand thee. Notice his preeminence, his power, his position. It reminds me of when I was a kid, we used to play what was called king on the hill. We would ascend to a certain dirt hill and we would be king on that hill for just a short time because all the kids in the neighborhood would figure out ways to knock you off the hill. But God is in heaven and he's above all the heathen of the kingdoms of the heathen. Look at verse 7. Art not thou our God? who did strive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel. Notice he's a personal God. Art thou not our God? You see, the children of Israel were his people. They were his precious seed. But because of the Abrahamic covenant, God made a promise to Abraham that through thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. In John 1, 12, it says, He came unto his own, but his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God. You see, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is our God too. Because of the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at verse 8. This is still the prayer of Jehoshaphat. And they dwell therein, the children of Israel, they dwell therein. And have built thee a sanctuary therein for thy name's sake. This is in Solomon's temple. If when evil cometh upon us as the sword judgment, or pestilence, or famine, we stand before thy house and in thy presence, for thy name is in this house, and cry unto thee in our affliction, then wilt thou hear and help. You see, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, our God, the God has ears to hear. He has eyes to see. The Bible says that their gods have eyes, but they see not. They have mouths, but they speak not. Hands have they, but they handle not. Feet have they, but they walk not. But our God, the Bible says, walks across the heavens to our help. And now he presents the problem. Verse 10. And now behold the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, whom thou wouldest not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and destroyed them not. Behold, I say how they reward us to come to cast us out of thy possession, which thou has given us to inherit. He said, this is our land, you gave it to us, and now they're coming to take it from us. In verse 12, O our God, wilt thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us, 
Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. That was the prayer Jehoshaphat prayed, and what a mighty prayer it was. He said, we have no might against this company. There's nothing we can do. We're helpless. We need you. But then he says something so precious, but our eyes are upon thee. You see, he wasn't looking at the armies. He was looking at God that was the only person that could possibly help him. You see, true prayer causes us to realize how powerful he is and how helpless we are. True prayer causes us to realize we are powerless and he is strong. True prayer sets our sights on the Lord Jesus Christ and not on the problem at hand. But our eyes are set upon thee. This week I talked to several of our folks and as they told me the battles they were fighting with health issues, some said, please pray. Some said, it's in his hands. Some said, I can only bow to his will. One said, I have seen him work before, and I know he can work again. And in one of those responses, I quoted Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech ye therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So now we've seen the prayer. Let's look at the prophet that stands up in that prayer meeting and speaks on behalf of the Lord. Look at 2 Chronicles 20, verse 14. Then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, the son of Jael, the son of Mataniah, a Levite, of the sons of Asaph came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. So during this prayer meeting, which the king is praying, this man actually from the band of the sons of Asaph stands up and gives a prophecy concerning the battle. Verse 15, And he said, Hearken ye, all Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou King Jehoshaphat. Thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid, nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook, before the wilderness of Jeruel, you shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, neither be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. After that prayer, the Spirit of the Lord came upon one of the people in that prayer meeting. He was of the sons of Asaph. Asaph was like a great, great, great grandfather to this young man. Asaph had been appointed to play and sing in the choir of King David. Actually, he played, Asaph played the symbols. They would go as the ark before the ark and they would sing and praise. Actually, Asaph wrote 
12 of the Psalms in the book of Psalms. And we know that they're songs. Look at Psalm chapter 50. Psalm chapter 50. The heading, a psalm of Asaph. Look at verse 15 of chapter 50. And call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. Look at Psalm chapter 73. It says a psalm of Asaph. Look at verse 28. But it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all thy works. This is Asaph, the one that had written these psalms. Look at uh, chapter 74, a mask of Asaph. What does that mean? It was an instruction time that he taught the people. Look at 75, verse 9. But I will declare forever, I will sing praises to the God of Jacob. Look at chapter 76, a song of Asaph. Chapter 77, a psalm of Asaph. Look at verse 1. I cried unto God with my voice, even unto God with my voice, and he gave ear unto me. Look at chapter 78, on the power of God. Another instruction teaching by Asaph. Look at chapter 79, a psalm of Asaph. Look at verse 13 of chapter 79. So we, so we thy people and sheep of thy pasture will give thee thanks forever. We will show forth thy praise to all generations. Look at chapter 80, a psalm of Asaph. Chapter 81, a psalm of Asaph. Chapter 82, a psalm of Asaph. Chapter 83, this is a final psalm that he wrote. Look at verse 18 of chapter 83. That men may know that thou, whose name alone is Jehovah, art the most high over all the earth. So, Jehoshaphat had prayed. There had been a prophecy about the battle. Now, what happened? Look at 2 Chronicles 2020. And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Israel, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe as prophets, so shall you prosper. And when he had consulted the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord that should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and to say, praise the Lord, for his mercy endureth forever. How did he fight this battle? He set singers in front of him, and they waited upon the Lord. Little David had to take a stone and a sling. Little David had to run to the battle. But this battle was too great for King Jehoshaphat and his army, and he was told to stand still, and the Lord would fight the battle for you. Look at the spoil of this battle. Verse 25, 2 Chronicles 20, 25. And when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil of them, they found among them in abundance both riches with the dead bodies and precious jewels, which they stripped off for themselves more than they could carry. And they were three days in gathering of the spoil. It was so much. It took them three days to spoil or take 
what was left of the armies. Now look at what happened on the fourth day. And on the fourth day, they assembled themselves in the valley of Baraka. For there they blessed the Lord. Therefore, the name of the same place was called the Valley of Baraka unto this day. And that means the Valley of Blessing. You see, we all fight battles. That's why there's so many battles mentioned in the Old Testament, because people had to fight the battles. We fight the battles today, but we fight because the Lord Jesus Christ has saved us and has given us hope. You see, in some of our battles, we are stuck in the valley of paralysis. We're afraid to move. We're afraid to do anything because we're stuck in that valley of paralysis. And this morning, I ask you to move from the valley of paralysis unto the valley of blessing. How do you do that? You move from fear to blessing in three ways. By prayer, we saw that with Jehoshaphat. By fasting, we saw that with Jehoshaphat. And I know some of you seniors have a hard time of fasting because of medicine. I ask you to submit a time that you can set apart to pray and to fast and to put everything aside. And what was the third part of when you move from fear to blessing? You pray, you fast, and you praise. You sing songs. If you're, if you're perplexed, and I'm sure many of you are because of having been in for so many weeks now, just start singing. Take your Bibles and look at Psalm 50, Psalm 73 to 83, those songs of Asaph. To move from paralysis to blessing, I suggest that each week and possibly each day if necessary, set a time apart to sing. You can include this with your prayer time. Why not have a little church service there all by yourself at your house? Open the Word of God. Open a songbook. Put on a CD of Christian music and listen to the praises of God. Each week I try on Mondays to spend about an hour just listening to songs. I start out with nearer, my God, to thee, because that's the prayer of my heart. I listen to songs through that time on how great thou art. What a friend we have in Jesus. In the garden, burdens are lifted at Calvary, the old rugged cross, amazing grace, and just a closer walk with thee. And then I thought of the song that I love to hear so often because Jehoshaphat said, but our eyes are upon thee. I thought of that song, turn your eyes upon Jesus. And the things of this world will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. I thought of another time when someone was to go into battle, and that was when Jesus Christ left the upper room with the disciples and started to the Garden of Gethsemane. On the night before he was to be crucified, the Bible says he started out to the Garden of Gethsemane and he sung a hymn with his disciples. You see, in the greatest battle ever fought, there was a song sung. I was thinking this morning, why do we sing before the church service? Because there's a battle for souls in the preaching of the cross and we sing because we're going into battle for the souls of men. Why do we sing and offer, I mean, a hymn right before the invitation? Because we're singing praises 
as we go into the battle because men and women have a decision to make for the Lord Jesus Christ. Sometimes, like David, we go in and run to the battle and we take a sword and a sling. And sometimes all we can take in is a song. I've heard so many times where people had told me the doctor saw on the x-ray a mass or a spot. And then there was confusion. I'm just wondering, was it because of the song that was sung in the people's heart as they prayed and asked God for his perfect will? Let's pray. Father, the battle is always yours. You've asked us to put on the whole armor of God that we can stand against the wiles of the devil. You've told us to put on the whole armor. And God, help us to pray and sing as we go about your business. I pray for our people that you will bless them. I pray, Lord, whatever battle they're fighting today, they will put it into your hands. Lord, I pray for the wisdom of our leaders of our church as they make decisions about us coming back to church. I pray for America. Lord, just remember that there's some here that love you and seek your perfect will. Bless our people. In Jesus' name, amen. Until we meet again next week, I pray you have a great week. Call me if you need anything. And just know I love you.